So, what does one do and what does one hope for? Well, hope for nothing. Today I sign an act of Congress authorizing intelligence programs vital to our security and creating a national commission to investigate the events of September the 11th, 2001 and the years that led up to, the, to that event. Today I'm pleased to announce my choice for commission chairman, Dr. Henry Kissinger. Who are the big shots you brought in? A lot of them, I don't know, a lot of them were like senators and congressmen from other states. Uh, a lot state of them senators or U.S. senators? Me to them. State senators or U.S. senators? State senators, U.S. senators, congressmen, governors. Jerry? Yeah. Jerry Waldie. Jerry Waldie, the FBI, he's an FBI agent in Omaha. For months they'd see him. Training for what? Monarch. Okay. He was one I, just of the guys. You, I just want you to say this. Yeah, okay. So there's no question about what you're okay. talking about. You understand what I'm He was doing? one of the guys that did the mind control stuff that would uh, kind of be like the protector. He'd kind of talk to you when things were happening and stuff and kind of try to make things that he was on your side and stuff and you could trust him. You couldn't trust nobody else, but you could trust him. And uh, I've seen at the time Vice President Bush go in and that all they did was the kids perform oral sex on them. The kids what? Perform oral sex on them. And the kid perform oral sex, which is the black kid or the white kid? Both of them. Well, first, I seen them at two different times. First with the white kid, then with When the you were in the closet? Yeah, we was were in the closet the both times. Oh, were you? That was our normal hideout. Me, uh, me, him, and other kids and stuff, that's where we hid out at. Remember the story of Pandora's box? Actually, it wasn't her box. It was a box that belonged to the gods. And he gave Pandora the box, the box of evil, they called it. And he told Pandora not to open it. And Pandora opened it. And the seven evils of the world came out. Then hope came out. After the seven evils of the world came out, hope came out. And we were told that hope came out to help us cope with the evils. Today, for the first time, and this is uh, February 22nd, I think it is, 1998, you name names. Before today, you've refrained from naming names. Would you like to tell us uh, who was involved in these various activities that you've described before? Yes, I would, Ted. Um, it's real scary for me, but I'd like to um, go on public record saying that um, my owner under my control was um, Bob Hope and that um, I was abused and used as a mind control sex slave by um, Ronald Reagan and um, a lot of different presidents, LBJ, Reagan, Ford, and um, I was programmed to have computerized um, mind files by Henry Kissinger. It is a great honor to be appointed by the president to be chairman of the nonpartisan independent commission to look into the facts and circumstances of the tragedy of September 11. But reality, <laughs> it's the box of evil, man. <laughs> hope came out of it. <laughs> Consider the possibility that hope may be lying. <laughs> Consider that possibility. It's not the box of evil and hope. <laughs> no, it's not. And Hope didn't have its own box. It was called the box of evil. And when Pandora opened it, they said the seven evils of the world came out and then Hope came out. See, so Hope is the evil that lies <laughs> from the start. <laughs> And I think it's an important distinction because about, about our mental capacities and abilities, I think like hoping, hoping and just kind of sit around, it's like waiting to be served. We're not activating the process, the intelligence, the gift, the, the gift that we have that will help to provide a solution to all of these things is through our intelligence and when we use, so if we use, if we embrace hope and use hope, it's like we're just neutralizing our intelligence. So I think it's better to think in terms, well, if I'll pray things get better. Because now I'm activating my intelligence. I'm, act, I'm active. So just about that part. 
did George Bush have knowledge about the drug operation coming out of C Central America and South America? Yes. Explain. Well, he was in one of the camps. He yeah. produced the cocaine. Yeah, but did he know about it? He was he standing at a press. George was also, in addition George to Ollie. George Bush was standing right at a cocaine press. And did you have a picture of that? In a place called Roos Roos. I have a picture of something. Okay, we won't go into that. Did Clinton, do you have any direct knowledge that Clinton had, uh, was aware of the drug operation coming into Arkansas? When I was at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, I actually flew uh, several missions carrying medical coolers again uh, with money and drugs in it into uh, Arkansas. Out of where, Fort Campbell? Out of Fort Campbell. It was delivered to us by the 324th Med Battalion. Out of the South America? Out of South America. Uh, they, they were operating in the South America in, in Honduras. It was flown by C-130 to Fort Campbell. It was marked medical supplies. Donor organs, this particular one, was marked. Um, and we were advised to give it to Dr. Lassiter uh, at uh, Little Rock Air Force Base. So we flew it to Little Rock Air Force Base. I opened the coolers. I don't, op I don't fly a cooler without opening it. I don't fly anything without opening it. Let me tell you why I don't fly coolers without opening them. I was told by Colby earlier that uh, Torrijos died simply because they put a uh, donor organ, uh, cooler marked donor, donor organs on his aircraft that blew up in flight. So whenever I see a cooler, I open it. And what did you find in the cooler? We found a, a large sum of money and three co kilos of cocaine in one cooler. In the other cooler, we found uh, all cocaine. Uh, those two coolers were picked up by Dr. Lassiter, who actually ended up being, as we found out in later years, a man named Dan Lassiter, who was convicted for trafficking cocaine in Arkansas. However, he was uh, pardoned by the then governor of Arkansas, Bill Clinton. And uh, did uh, you have any information that Clinton had direct knowledge of that? No, you flew him into Arkansas. Was, was Clinton there waiting for it, or was there a limousine there or anything like that? We had to wait over an hour and a half to show up. But when he finally showed up, he showed up in an entourage of vehicles. There was a van, there was a stretch limo, and uh, an unmarked police car. Uh, in, in the coming out of the uh, stretch limo, uh, Dr. Lassiter came forward. Uh, he had two people with him. One stayed in the car and one came over. He introduced uh, the one uh, that walked over to, with, to uh, the aircraft to pick up the coolers as uh, the governor of Arkansas. And the governor of Arkansas extended his hand, and that's the first time I shook the hand of uh, William Jefferson Clinton. He let he wanted to let me know that the people of Arkansas appreciated me bringing those uh, donor organs. It, 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 oh, that because he, he didn't know you'd looked into him. He huh? didn't know I looked into it. Yeah, they